Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Tuesday, August 20th, 2024. On this day of the Warrior King, Mars Day and Tears Day. It is the 30th of Leo, the 16th of Hazel, the 30th of Salmon, the 24th of Hayanir, which is the Haymaking Month. For our astrology, the sun remains in Leo, fixed fire, representing achievement. The moon is third quarter Pisces, mutable water, representing dreaming. Mercury is retrograding in Leo, fixed fire, representing fragile relationships. Venus is in Virgo, mutable earth, representing perfectionism. Mars is in Gemini, mutable air, which means to be pugnacious. Jupiter is in Gemini, mutable air, representing questing. Saturn is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is to redefine dreams. Uranus is in Taurus, fixed Fixed Earth representing renovation. Neptune is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is about spiritual awakening. And Pluto is retrograding in Aquarius, fixed air, meaning to examine intentions. Now for our retrogrades. For Mercury, uh, remember to reevaluate re communication patterns. Uh, for Saturn, reclaim your authority. For Neptune, reclaim faith, joy, magic, and imagination. For Pluto, reclaim your ability to regenerate. And for Chiron, restore the heroic spirit. Now for our moon phase, we have gone into the waning gibbous. So absorb any revelations you took in from the full moon. And um, then for the Pisces moon, some of your dues are charity, poetry, meditation, and the don'ts are over-socializing, too much rationality, and unwise connections. And as it is the day of Mars, and Mars is remaining very, very feisty in Gemini, and that is very much at odds with the dreamy Piscean moon that just wants to drift away and contemplate any insights it received during the full moon. Uh, these things are not congruent and reconciling these energies is not going to be easy or intuitive to do. So if you feel agitated today, probably the best thing you can do is to remove yourself from the situation as much as possible. And perhaps if there's something you really want to say, uh, perhaps wait until tomorrow. Uh, you can sleep on it. The energy may have cleared up a little bit by then, and uh, you won't find yourself saying something in haste that perhaps you'll regret later on down the road. Yeah, probably a day to stay off social media, just saying. Uh, today's tarot is the Knight of Swords. Uh, knights represent uh, dynamic messengers. And the suit of swords is the rational masculine, projective energy, air element, and the mind. And the key words for this card are good judgment, uh, overbearing, uh, acts with authority, arrogance, opinionated, dogmatic. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag uh, with this card. It really depends upon how the energy is used and where it's being uh, impacted in your life as to whether or not this is something uh, that's uh, very virtuous or something that is not good at all. Uh, so it is time to charge, uh, but mind how you go. Uh, getting the job done and getting the job done without collateral damage are not the same things. And uh, that just really aligns with what I was saying a moment ago about the conflict between the moon and Mars today is just, just, just be in mind of, uh, you know, mind your surroundings like the ninjas, be aware of these energies and, uh, and how they're interacting. Uh, there are way of doing things that will accomplish the tasks that don't necessarily uh, compromise your long-term interests. For today's Celtic triad, it reads three things of great comfort for one to have their mate in their bed, their fire in their hearth, and their money in their purse. So this is about everyone and everything being in the right place, having the proper order of life. It's about having a sense of security and well-being, knowing that you are you are being safeguarded against loneliness because you have your spouse. You're safeguarded against the cold because there's warmth in the house when you need it. And you're safeguarded from uh, abject poverty because you have resources that you can use for trade. And now life is very uncertain. And uh, the reason why we seek comfort and why we should be appreciative of the comforts we have is so that we can restore ourselves so that we are better able to confront adversity when it comes, does come our way. Uh, so yeah, that's what that has to say. I don't think it requires much more elaboration. And today's magical correspondences are centered on the theme of en enmity, specifically to deal with, because there's no shortage of enmity today. Uh, the color for this is red. The plant is the poppy. And uh, no, we're not going to be making milk of the poppy juice or anything of that sort in order to tranquil. Oh, I don't know where the video cut out, but I just saying, you know, we're not using any kind of aspect of the poppy or any poppy related pro 
product to uh, tranquilize our enemies and make them not bother us. You know, we're not doing that with this particular correspondence and we're not numbing, uh, numbing ourselves either. It's a different usage. Uh, the animal is for the wolf and the crystal is the red banded agate. Uh, there's a really, really, really unhealthy degree of adversarialness within society. Uh, we can use our capabilities as uh, practitioners of the craft uh, to deprive this state of affairs of energy, weakening the storm. Because the basic rule of storms, whether we're talking about a physical storm or a storm of energy, is that it's going to continue on as long as the storm has the necessary energy to sustain itself. And uh, depending on the amount of energy it has, its potency, and uh, where what direction it's uh, drifting off towards, uh, that's really going to have an impact on the amount of damage that it does and where the damage occurs. Now, um, for ourselves as as witches, uh, there's there's a lot of things we're worried about right now. So using our talents to kind of start draining that, um, usually. Uh, that kind of a magical vampire vampirism is something to be avoided. But in this case about taking the nastiness out of society to where uh, people can approach difficulties a bit more clear headed and be a lot more solution oriented rather than, you know, I'm just going to, you know, battle, battle to the death, essentially kind of mentality. If we can use our energy to take uh, the energy out of these things, that is something we can do uh, that in our own small way can contribute to improving the situation. And, you know, we're, we're just, you know, we're on our own here, you know, we're just one, but if more and more of us can encourage our brothers and sisters in the craft to do this, uh, then we can collectively have a greater impact. And, you know, um, we won't know how much of an effect we can have unless we try. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, this is something that you can do that actually does contribute towards helping. Now for today's practices. Uh, it's Tuesday. It's a cranky day. I uh, might as well uh, use some of this energy to uh, break a self-inflicted hex. Now I'm saying self-inflicted hex because I'm getting more and more convinced that most of the times where we feel really trapped in an energetic way, a lot of it is pretty much self-inflicted because uh, we have thought patterns that we haven't identified as being unhelpful. We have behavioral patterns that we have not identified as being self-destructive. And so we keep doing the same things, keep getting the same results, and we don't like it. And we haven't really analyzed as to why that is. Well, it's a self-inflicted hex. And uh, part of it is believing that, you know, there's no other way for it to go. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's depriving ourselves of agency. So breaking out of that is not only a productive thing to do, but it can really uh, allow us to overcome some challenges that perhaps have been bogging us down. Then today's hermetic principle is vibration. All energy, of course, is taking place on uh, as some form of vibration or another, and it reverberates through the universe. So thinking a little bit more about the impact we have with the energy that we are exuding and the energy that we are specifically directing outward uh, and just thinking about, okay, how is that rippling out uh, to affect the bigger picture? Uh, something worth contemplating today. Then on the Witch's Pyramid today, we are looking at the South Wall. This is linked with the fire element, and it is about drive, the drive to do something. So very much in line with Tuesday energies just in general. Uh, but in addition to this, uh, thinking about, you know, summoning the energy to get something done, uh, maybe also sparing a few moments of contemplation about how we go about getting something done because the how is uh, is one of those uh, devil in the details moments uh, there's many ways to do things but not all of those ways lead to equally good outcomes so it does matter how we do things it does matter how we say things it matters how we communicate our intentions and and how, what we communicate to others about our goals so just uh, bear that in mind and uh, maybe give that a little bit of a study Speaking of study, uh, take a look at a passage from The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And uh, today would also be a really good day for candle magic. And uh, I found a few tips. Um, this is from Witchy Trips on Instagram. Uh, she says that uh, there's much more to candle magic than just choosing color correspondence correspondences and I fully endorse and agree with that statement and she gave us some suggestions. Uh, the first is carving either sigils, words, prayers, names, dates, symbols, numbers, whatever we can think of onto the candle itself. Uh, it does help if we have a larger candle. Um, I, I really like those nice fat thick pillar candles. Those are really handy and you can find a lot of different containers for them and you have actually a room to do carving on it and of course this doesn't have to be you know beautiful carving that you know Michelangelo would be proud of. Uh, no, this is 
it, it's it's okay for the, you not to be particularly artistic. Uh, this does not prevent you from doing any carving on your magical candles. Another suggestion is dressing, anointing, rolling candles and oils and or herbs. Uh, you can make this very, very tailored. videos back. Uh, as I was saying, you can make this very tailored to your intentions. Uh, so again, this is why it's handy to keep some correspondences for uh, the kind of magical workings you do over and over again. So uh, you're not having to re research things every single time. Let's see, and then uh, there's caromancy, which is the art of reading melted wax for divination purposes. That's not something I have really tried in the past. Uh, you would have to do your own research about that, uh, but it is something that's available for you to try. Uh, then loading the candles, carving a small hole and filling it with herbs, oils, and, uh, you know, other little curiosities. Uh, of course, this would be something that uh, you don't mind losing to the wax. So, uh, you know, probably not a, you know, if you have any family jewelry, I wouldn't suggest carving a hole, putting the jewelry in it and letting it melt. Uh, I don't think uh, that will, I don't think you'll be very happy with that result. I'll put it that way. And then flames. Uh, pay attention to the messages of the flames themselves, whether it's large, small, active, slow, it's crackling, if it's whipping around in the wind, especially if you are in an area that's very still. The direction which the flames go, the direction in which the smoke goes, it actually can tell you something. So uh, doing a little bit of research about how to interpret that could be an interesting thing to do today. And then shapes. Um, you can put shapes, uh, uh, you know, she suggested skulls, hearts, animal spheres, pyramids, whatever else that it is. Uh, these could be candles in these shapes. Uh, these, you could be, you know, if you're really good at carving, you could make an attempt to make the candle these shapes, uh, whatever else that it is. But I think it proves the point that candle magic isn't just, I picked this color because it aligns with this intention. And so I'm hoping to get this result. You can do so much more. And of course, the more you infuse into your magical workings, uh, the, that means the more energy is given getting directed out for that intention, which means you are much more likely to get what you want done. And today's journaling prompt. Describe how you have successfully broken unhealthy patterns in the past. Even if it's something that you think is very small and maybe ultimately didn't matter, whatever it is that you have, uh, talk about that a little bit today. I bet that once you dig beneath the surface of it, you realize, you know, I, I actually did accomplish something when I overcame this particular challenge. And of course, you can use that as fuel to help you uh, break other uh, other unhealthy patterns, especially if you decide, you know, maybe I do need to uh, think a little bit about any self-inflicted hexes I might have put on myself. Maybe I do need to break the cycle for myself in some fashion. And journaling about how you've done this in the past, it can inspire you for what you do now and in the future. And uh, that just about sums it up for today. I hope you have a good Tuesday. Again, uh, Probably not the best day for interactions on social media, so do be careful. Uh, but otherwise, um, you can follow me at Blackbird's Brew on X. Uh, you can find the Blackbird Grimoire on YouTube and Rumble. And of course, if you want to chat with me and a growing number of uh, very pleasant, very sweet ladies, uh, you can come and join the Oak and Elder Witchery on Gilded. Link in the description box and uh, you can chat with us there. But I think that does it for today and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.